First of all, I want to um, take the opportunity to thank you, uh, Your Excellency, Ms. Tichelashvili, for taking your time off your busy schedule uh, to chat with me. And in my position as former ESD ambassador to the Republic of Austria, I'm very delighted and I'm looking forward to this interview. So um, my first question would be, uh, going through your CV, one can see that you gained numerous experiences abroad, mostly within Europe. And would you say that these experiences were essential assets through your career and are even advantageous uh, for your work as an ambassador today? Sure, because uh, I think more experience you gain, more skilled you are, so you push and extend your horizon, uh, you enrich your education, your background, um, and I think those experiences are indeed the asset that served me well. And uh, there is never an end point. So I think uh, as long as we live and as, well, as long as we are active and hopefully longer than shorter, uh, we must try to gain something new. That is what keeps us moving and driving and exploring also ourselves and best of ourselves. Um, you have worked many years in the ministry in Georgia until you were appointed as ambassador in spring. How did you prepare for such a responsible position? Okay, I used to work eight years uh, at the Ministry for basically conflict resolution and civic integration. It used to be called for reconciliation and civic equality. And out of these eight years, I had very responsible positions. So I first was the first deputy minister and I was um, also involved uh, in uh, Geneva international discussions, which are the only peace talks about the resolution of the conflict that Georgia has with Russia uh, because of continued Russian occupation of Abkhazia and Srinagar, South Ossetia, together more than 20% of our territory. And I used to lead the Georgian delegation in the humanitarian working group. And after that, I used to be a minister. So the responsibilities were even higher. And um, I think if you, if you ask how I prepared for this point where I'm now, it's just by doing, because um, I, I think those eight years were quite extraordinary in my life and in my experience. I truly cannot compare it to anything else so far, because this one is not less responsible, uh, highly responsible, of course, and still different. Um, I think also that experience and some other experiences, particularly of negotiations, um, gives a certain background that I think will serve me well now when I'm representing Georgia here and in Austria. And not only because I wear three hats and my delegation wears three hats, so we are uh, representing Georgia in Austria, we are also representing Georgia at uh, OSCE, uh, we are also representing Georgia in other international organizations and there are quite some in Vienna because Vienna is one of the most important diplomatic capitals, as you know. So it's really a great honor and it's, uh, it's, it's really thrilling to think that uh, we now as a team and I myself personally represent the face of our country. It's a huge trust. Indeed, and uh, as thrilling as it is, as formidable uh, it is also to think of high responsibility. You don't represent yourself, you don't represent uh, your family, you represent your country. And this is something that uh, I think all the diplomats always bear in mind. I find it very interesting that many people cannot associate much with the work of an ambassador or a diplomat, or even um, the definition of diplomacy these days. Therefore, I would really like to know what diplomacy means, means to you. So there is this maybe the idea or an ideal that you serve, and I, I think it's useful and important that diplomats have, whether you're a career diplomat or you are somebody like myself who had different experiences, including a politics, government, civil society and now I come where probably the initial destination was. Uh, or you are just doing it kind of step by step. You have to have this idea, and for me it is diplomacy, that you are really uh, representing your country. 
And starting from that point, it involves a lot of daily work. So it's not just, uh, you know, some emotional, nice narrative that I'm here. Serving your country means hard work. And when you have three mandates, it means even three times harder work. It, it's, it's really a lot uh, of details, uh, a lot of context. What I think nowadays is the biggest challenge is COVID background, because especially for diplomats, people like us, for whom for centuries diplomacy is about communication, isn't it? So it's about negotiation. It's about uh, presenting your interests, it's about scale. So this personal contact, like face-to-face -face contact, is a tremendously important component of our work, especially when you're starting something. So myself, like probably some uh, other newcomers in the town and the diplomatic corps, we find it the most challenging part that we have to give, go to this hybrid means, which are great that we have them, you know, to talk online or have a Zoom meeting, but it's not always the same when you have a personal meeting or a chat about the issues that are important. This is, you know, diplomacy is a very delicate fabric, so it comes from um, really, yeah, it's very diverse. It's daily work, it's details, it's personal contacts, personal skills, and at the end of the day, it ends up as a big idea. And of course, it, it, it will be very fulfilling if uh, those aims and goals that we have generally serving good, but at the same time having very concrete benchmarks, you know, to advance bilateral relations, to advance specific security agenda, for instance, at OEC, all respective agendas in the other organizations they come through. Mm -hmm. I think this uh, seal, this goal, is very important also to have. From the view of your experiences, working in the embassy um, for nearly three months now, which is yet a short time, but still, how would you describe the relation between Georgia and Austria? I think the, our countries have uh, excellent relations. Uh, there is a very good dynamic that already exists. And if you wanted to imagine it as a curve, it's always increasing. So these relations go deeper, friendship goes closer. There are more and more areas for cooperation. Um, we had Austrian embassy opened in 2016 in Georgia that gave additional impetus on, on to these relations. And um, I think there is still a lot of potential to explore. Particularly, we are looking now in the dimension of economy, uh, transport, also tourism, which was increasing by 30% every year in the course of last three years, just because before a COVID pandemic from Austria to Georgia. With Visa Free, we also have quite some visitors to Austria, but we're a small nation and maybe we cannot make numerically that much difference. However, for people to people contacts, it's not about statistical numbers, it's about the qual qualitative change, and that is always growing. We are also interested to develop uh, more the regional cooperation between the certain regions of Austria and certain regions of Georgia. And sometimes you even have a similarity. So we are now planning to have a memorandum uh, of understanding and cooperation between the two mountainous regions and I think it will serve these countries good. What I find very thrilling and I would like to share with you is that we also have a common historical figure, I would say shared historical figure, an Austrian lady who was the first Nobel Prize winner for peace, Bertha von Suttner. She's very famous in Austria, but not many may know that up to 10 years she used to live in Georgia. And some of these uh, ideas and her calls for universal peace her efforts to, to stop the guns and the war uh, also relate somehow to Georgia. And uh, she, she found these years, of course, very interesting in her life. And uh, despite it was more than a century ago, uh, really now it's so um, kind of uh, actual in Georgia to strive for peace because our fight for freedom is not yet over, right? When you have an unresolved conflict, uh, this is a huge challenge. And despite it doesn't stop my country to go forward and to develop, to aspire to European Union or Euro-Atlantic structures, 
it's a big burden and we live with this burden every day. So of course, peace has no alternative. And again, Bertha von Suttner is a great symbolic face to this. Uh, and of course, also solution of the problems has no alternative. I'm happy and we will probably do a lot through the embassy to make many people know that we, we even have such a common figure in, in our history. Uh, that I think will bring also culturally uh, our nations even closer. What are your goals and plans to strengthen this relation in the years to come? Vienna is a capital for culture. I think Georgia has a lot more to offer. Uh, I think that Austrian audiences will find it very interesting to get acquainted to Georgian music, dance, Perhaps literature, one of the oldest and unique scripts. Um, Georgian may not be the most popular language, it's pretty difficult to learn as well, but as, a, uh, as it is basically a you know, material cultural heritage of the world, I think it's also worth promoting and letting the world know that we have this very strong historical and cultural uh, foundation mm -hmm. as a modern country. And my last but not least uh, question, where do you see Georgia in the next 10 years? I see Georgia in the European Union, hopefully, but uh, I also believe in it because on the one hand we are striving and this strive is very steadfast, it's irreversible, it's supported by 80% of population, but it's not only a new choice, it's uh, where we belong also civilizationally, culturally. It has been a choice that uh, Georgia has made 100 years ago with the First Republic, which was interrupted just in three years by the Soviet occupation. And we lost basically 70 years uh, of, for the, of this drive. Uh, I mean, Europe, idea of Europe and the European Union came later, but that is the structure now that represents the conglomeration of the not ideals, principles, but also very pragmatic cooperation and it's a project for peace. So it is everything that we try to aspire now to, to and to sort our lives uh, around also inside the country. I want to thank you again for taking your time. Uh, it was a great pleasure. That's it, so I wish you good luck with your project and of course all your endeavors in future.